Yeah, g'day and welcome back to the show. I'm working on updating this old Shelblin 125 CNC lathe, putting Linux CNC brain into it. Lately, I've been working on the control cabinet installations. Man, I'm such a moron. I bolted this bracket down to the back plate, and I was thinking at the time, man, that's quite a long way away from the connectors. Well, oh God. Yeah, that's what those two bolts are for. Thanks for pointing that out. Now, ideally, this braid would have come down I mean, clamped in here, but I've made it too short and I don't really want to change it. I was told to connect the shielding to this bracket as well. So let's make a bracket. You know, I was watching the channel Jester 1963's Atlas 7B Shaper Restoration and he was talking about the times he experienced compressor and afterburner stalls in his F16. The only compressor stall I ever encountered was in our way to an exercise in Kwantan, Malaysia with number 75 squadron. I was in the team sent with the Boeing 727s to meet the fighters on arrival. The plan was to send us from Ohakia to Amberley, then Darwin and then on to Kwantan. With New Zealand being culturally insular in nature, our ops hadn't realised that it was Ramadan. In contrast to civil aircraft, military flights always need overflight permission. Ops applied too late, so we didn't get clearance to cross Indonesian airspace and had to go around them. From Darwin, this meant gas stops in Port Hedland, Cocos Keeland Island, and then Kwantan. There was a really strong crosswind in Port Hedland, and when the aircrew lined up the 727 on the runway and throttled up the engines, there was a really loud bang from the right-hand engine, and so they spooled back down. The bang sounded similar to being close to an artillery gun being fired. They tried throttling up a second time, and again it stalled. You can imagine the feeling of unease of a whole plane full of aircraft mechanics in a compressor stall. They then taxied off the runway to a holding area facing into the wind and did engine run-ups to full power to make sure nothing had been damaged. With the engine still okay, it was then back to the runway, but this time, rather than a standing start, they did a rolling start, only throttling up that right-hand engine number three once the aircraft had got some speed up. So why does a compressor stall? Well, air, like people, doesn't like being put under pressure. So you have to take power from the turbine and use that to perform work on the air to compress it. Modern engines have axial flow compressors made up of many stages. A stage is one set of little airfoils, blades, rotating on the disc, and a second set of stationary airfoils that we call vanes. The space between the blades forms a convergent duct which accelerates the air, while the space between the vanes forms a divergent duct which slows the air back down, but converts the added energy to pressure and temperature. So through the compressor, the average velocity is kind of alternating up and down a little, but the pressure is constantly rising. Now being airfoils, like little wings, if the air approaches the, the front of the airfoil at too great an angle, rather than flowing nicely around the blade, it separates and becomes turbulent. And that can allow the flow to reverse, kind of sneezing forward through the compressor. So I just cut back the sleeving here to make sure I get a good electrical conductivity. So why does a crosswind cause the compressor stall? Well the inlet is also a sort of an airfoil shaped, and the extreme crosswind was causing flow separation and turbulent air to be ingested by the compressor, disturbing the flow in the compressor. So then why did a rolling start help? Well, as the plane picked up speed, the relative wind is more on the nose, preventing the flow separation in the inlet. I've tied the earths of the sign filter, the VFD and the line reactor together, but it's about time I did a common earth. Shoblin had this really nice bronze or brass bus bar, so I think I'll just remount that and reuse it. Now 
Now I'm going to need a decent electrical bond. So just get this paint back off. To control the VFD and test it all out, I need its uh, signal wires. But for that, I need the Mesa cards connected. And if I'm going to connect them, I might as well mount them straight on the backplate. So let's do that next. Hey, cool. Nico's back working on the trailer for the. What's it called? E-scooter. For the yeah. e-scooter, electric scooter trailer. And what we have here is a little bracket setup that I'm going to have to then. Weld together, right? I need your best work at welding. Yeah, good luck with that. Oh, so that's the trailer hitch. Yes. Why are you using the ruler starting with 70? What happened to the end of it? Guess what? Somebody made a great job of it. I needed a special tool for a guitar neck. I bought a ruler specifically to, to gash out the, the fret clearance and, and make the tool, which worked, but yeah, what an idiot. I should have cut it off the other end of the ruler. Is it the one for me? Yeah. So let's see how those plug welds came out. Nick already ground back these ones to look pretty, because they're the ones you can see. Oh. Okay, well that was a complete failure. No penetration, no bonding whatsoever. And the, th the three layer piece, yeah. Okay, well, maybe one layer is welded together, or maybe it's just glued together with slag. Maybe I should just epoxy them together. You know, last week I said to Patreons I wouldn't use money donated to the channel for booze or partying and stuff like that. However, I've been told by a number of our prospective Patreons that that is unacceptable. So thanks for your support, guys. Guess a drill stop would be a good idea, huh? Well, that's it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching, and especially a big thanks to all of the Patreons and people who donated to the channel. It's a big help. I really appreciate that. So, see you again next week, and we'll see the Patreons for a live stream straight after this show.